this point in time, the craft had trouble lifting itself and a pilot off the ground. We had a 700 cubic feet per minute of airflow engine, or CFM engine, and um, we decided that it could not fill the airspace under the hovercraft fast enough. And uh, the designed hover height of 10 inches and the uh, engine only being 700 CFM was working against each other. We decided that we were going to replace the 700 CFM blower with a bigger 1200 CFM blower and that that should probably fix the problem. Here's the first test run after many modifications to the skirt and the closure system on the back. The combination of a larger and more powerful leaf blower and a shorter hover height worked. As you can see, the hovercraft finally picked up off the ground, with the pilot inside. Feeling rather jubilant, <laughs> we decided to plug in the newly mounted fan and take the craft outside for a real test run and some fun. After a month of working on our hovercraft, we have had our first successful test run. Um, we came across several problems with the skirt. The main one was that the material is thick so it bunches around the edges and that allows for pockets of air to leave and that takes away from the efficiency. Since the craft skirt is made from vinyl, um, it's not very strong and it, and it um, actually ripped in the back, the seam ripped, so that's a problem. We um, wanted to go farther than just picking somebody up. We wanted to go, be able to go forward. So we attached a fan, but um, we did not use a gas-powered fan or any uh, high-power fan, and um, it it wasn't powerful enough to thrust somebody forward. So we're going to add a gas-powered engine to our fan, and also we need to make some adjustments to the blade in the fan. Um, the pitch of the fan, which is the degree, um, we need to perfect that to make it most efficient and the material of the blade um, to be more efficient, to be more heavier and uh, thicker so that it blows more air. We have little um, door lock kind of things like deadbolts back here in the back and we have holes, we'll, we, will have holes. we will have holes drilled in the supports along the side. So if there's too much weight in the back, we can just unlock the door lock and then slide it up and then reattach it. And this also allows for us to remove it in case we want to turn it over and work on the skirt or something like that. We could move the fan back and forth, but a more efficient way, we, um, we installed a sliding chair, and that's much easier. And it's closer to the middle, so it'll be more effective. So we can just slide it forward if there's too much weight in the back, or slide it back if there's too much weight in the front and that will solve our weight distribution issues. Another problem we had with the skirt is that on, on the sides it would blow out once the air started to come through. So air would just leak out and we would lose a lot of efficiency. So to fix this problem, we've added a bar that runs down the length of the craft to keep it from going like this and the bar just holds it stiff. And it also um, keeps it evenly wrapped around here because if you have this blowing out, then it pulls this in like that. With the three major functions of the craft, lift, propulsion, and steering, somewhat functional, we decided it was time to improve on these. 
We began by improving on our skirt design, which has to do with the lift of the craft. We got a different type of material and tailored it to fit the corners on the craft. Here we have the new skirt material. Here we have the entire skirt sewn together with our little curves and when we attach to the craft and turn on the blower it will inflate the skirt and hopefully give it a nice curve. The new tailored skirt design worked much better than the old drawstring system. However, we were still not able to make the craft move on its own. After a few test runs, we determined that the electric fan and fan blade were not, or could not provide thrust sufficient enough to push the craft forward. So we decided that we were going to remove the electric motor and fan blade and replace it with a gas engine and a um, airplane propeller from Hobby Shop. This is the electric motor that we removed from the shell of the fan. This is my dad's Kawasaki Weed Whacker. It has a 22cc engine and we've decided that this engine might be able to propel the craft forward. This is one of our propellers and we're going to try to mount it right here to this fan which is directly connected to the engine. After mounting the propeller to the weed whacker, it was time to mount the new engine and propulsion system into the fan trap. We attached the propeller to the weed whacker engine using two bolts and this is the motor mount for the weed whacker to pass on either end and it's just a board running across and this is a support for the board and now we're going to mount the weed whacker. In addition to mounting the weed whacker engine, we designed and installed a system of strings to keep the contact point of the skirt from going outside the base of the craft and we were off on another test run. handle set up using a couple pieces of wood which weren't attached to it and the pieces of wood fell down in and got sucked up into the fan so that is why it stopped working. Um, that can easily be fixed with a new fan or something of that sort. Um, other than that our run was very successful and we will continue to try to improve on it. <laughs>